So we're going to look at uh, Rover Random Section 3. Last time we left him, he and the, the man the moon's dog were outside a cave where they were trying to hide from the strange moon snow, and uh, there happened to be a big dragon in there, the, the, the great white dragon. So um, this is where we find them outside now after they realize that there is a dragon in the cave. The man himself was a bit bothered by this dragon. That dratted creature was what he called him when he referred to him at all. All the white dragons originally come from the moon, as you probably know. But this one had been to the world and back, so he had learned a thing or two. He fought the red dragon in Care Dragon in Merlin's time, as you will find in all the more up-to-date history books. Okay, uh, when the when the the man in the moon says dratted, it's, it's almost like a swear word. Like it's he's annoyed. It's like darn, like ah, I don't like him, kind of thing. There, um, when he says referred to him is when he talked about him. So that means he didn't actually like talking about him. Um, Merlin, of course, is was the the main wizard in the story of King Arthur long ago. Um, if you don't know that. After which, the other dragon was very red. Later, he did lots of damage in the Three Islands and went to live on top of Snowdon for a time. People did not bother to climb up while that lasted, except for one man, and the dragon caught him drinking out of a bottle. That man finished in such a hurry that he left the bottle on top, and his example has been followed by many people since. So when he says, so the white dragon fights the red dragon, and then he says the red dragon was very red after that. What he means is it was dead. Like, he, it was bloody. <laughs> so the white dragon killed the red dragon. So it's, it's a joke. Um, later, he did lots of damage in the three islands. What do I mean by three islands? It means, um, it means England, Ireland, and Wales. And that's why Snowdon here is, uh, is a place in, um, in Great Britain. Okay. So... When he says that this, so that so the white dragon was staying in um, in England at this time, and then he says his example has been followed by. So his example is this man who drank a bottle. Now that's also just a joke about people who go up on this hill and and drink, and then they leave their bottles there. They litter. They they you know they leave their trash there, and they're saying, oh no no, but it's because there's a dragon up there. So and they run away, but it's actually just because they're horrible people who leave trash on a mountain. Okay. A long time since, and not until the dragon had flown off to Gwynfa, sometime after King Arthur's disappearance at a time when dragons' tails were esteemed a great delicacy by the Saxon kings. Gwynfa is not so far from the world's edge, and it is an easy flight from there to the moon for a dragon, so titanic and so enormously bad as this one had become. Okay, so he's just giving the history of this dragon, and this dragon has lived, this white dragon has lived for a very long time. Um, so it says, sometime after King Arthur's disappearance, it's King Arthur of England, lived thousands of years ago. Um, then it says, at a time when dragons' tails were esteemed. Now, esteemed means that people have a high opinion, they're valuable, they're important. And then it says, as a great delicacy, meaning people like to eat dragon's tails. And a delicacy isn't just something that you like to eat, it's something that you, that's luxurious, that's fancy to eat. Okay, uh, the Saxons were a group of people who um, who ruled England uh, in, uh, in the Middle Ages, like maybe 1,000, 1,200 years ago. And then, um, so then it says it went off to Gwynfa. They don't really explain where that is. And then it says a dragon so titanic. Um, titanic is not the ship. That would be with a capital letter. Titanic is an adjective that means very, very large. Um, so that's when he was living close to the edge of the world, right? And it's there that he flew to the moon. So the, 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 they're just giving like a history of this dragon who lived very long and how he got to the moon. He now lived on the moon's edge, for he was not quite sure how much the man in the moon could do with his spells and contrivances. All the same, he actually dared at times to interfere with the color scheme. Sometimes he let real red and green flames out of his cave when he was having a dragon feast or was in a tantrum, and clouds of smoke were frequent. Once or twice he had been known to turn the whole moon red or put it out altogether. 
Um, so so now we, we get to where the dragon is actually now living on the moon's edge, right? Why is he living on the edge? Because he doesn't want to get close to the man in the moon who he's afraid of. Then he says spells, and that's, of course, magic spells. When they say contrivances, what they mean is like the things that the wizard makes, right? His, his like magical potions and things that he makes and rockets or whatever. Um, all the same. He actually dared at times to interfere. So interfere means to, you know, like go in there and make a mess um, with the color scheme. So the color scheme they mean here, the colors of the moon. So usually the moon is is white or slightly golden, right? So um, sometimes he let out real red and green flames. And then it says uh, if he was having a tantrum, a tantrum is when you get like really angry and you scream and you cry. It's usually we associate tantrums with kids, young kids, babies, right? They throw a tantrum. Um, you have like a kid in a store and the mom says, you can't have that. And then the kid drops down on the floor and starts crying and screaming and kicking. It's a tantrum. But you can imagine a tantrum from a dragon would look a little different. <laughs> um, so uh, frequent, of course, means often. Okay. And once or twice he had been known to make the moon red, right? If he would make the moon red with his flames, right? Um, <laughs> of course, sometimes we get a red moon or something. So there's kind of an explanation for that. And he says he put it out altogether. So that means he would stop the moon from shining. And again, this is kind of a joke of like when the moon is not showing, right? When the moon is dark from, we can see it from the earth. Um, On such uncomfortable occasions, the man in the moon shut himself up and his dog, and all he said was, that dratted creature again. He never explained what creature or where he lived. He simply went down into the cellars, uncorked his best spells, and got things cleared up as quickly as possible. So uh, cellars, of course, again, is the basement of his tower. Uh, uncorked, right? A bottle would have a cork like a wine bottle. So, you'd... so his spells are clearly in bottles, which is interesting. So it's a different kind of magic. And then he got things cleared up, which means he fixed things. He, you know, the dragon messes things up, and then he would fix them with his spells. Now you know all about it. And if the dogs had known half as much, they would never have stopped there. But stop they did, at least as long as it has taken me to explain about the white dragon. And by that time, the whole of him, white with green eyes and leaking green fire at every joint and snorting black smoke like a steamer, had come out of the cave. Then he let off the most awful bellow. The mountains rocked and echoed, and the snow dried up. Avalanches tumbled down, and waterfalls stood still. So basically, the dragon's coming out of his cave, and what he does when he comes out is he bellows. So bellow is like a deep, loud roar. And this roar causes the following, right? The mountains rocked, meaning ghosts, they, they shake from back to forth. Um, they echoed, which means the sounds are repeating and bouncing off of them. Um, there were avalanches, so the snow is sliding down the mountain um, and, uh, and tumbled. So they say that avalanches tumble. Tumble is just a word for fall, slide down and the waterfalls stood still. So they're just, he's, the, the writer's trying to describe how big and scary and powerful this dragon is, that one of his roars can cause all this, right? Just him coming out of his cave can cause all this. So a uh, very powerful dragon there. Um, of course, he says the waterfalls <laughs> stood still. Um, that's a, now, the other things make sense. An avalanche makes sense. Uh, the mountain shaking makes sense. Echoes make sense, but waterfalls standing still, um, I think that's just kind of a bit of hyperbole. He's exaggerating that the waterfalls are literally so scared that they don't move, <laughs> like frozen in fear. Um, that dragon had wings, like the sails that ships had when they still were ships, and not steam engines. And he did not disdain to kill anything from a mouse to an emperor's daughter. He meant to kill those two dogs, and he told them so several times before he got up into the air. That was his mistake. They both whizzed off their rock like rockets, and went away down the wind at a pace that Mew himself would have been proud of. So um, the dragon's coming out, right? And he spreads his wings. He's got huge wings. So they're, they're comparing it to a simile here, like the sails that ships had. Now they say had because, of course, ships don't have sails anymore, right? Even though we still say a ship sails. That's the movement of a ship is sail because it used to be sails. Um, the sail, of course, being the piece of cloth with the wind. So that's huge, right? Um, and it says he did not disdain. Disdain means 
you're, you don't want to do something because you're too important, right? But it says he did not disdain, which means he he didn't care. He was this giant dragon, but he would kill anything, right? It says from a mouse to an emperor's daughter, he would kill something that was tiny and unimportant, and he would kill something that was very important, right? Um, he meant to kill those two dogs, and he told them so several times. That's like three or four times. So you can imagine he's coming out of this cave, fire going, spreading his wings, like, I'm going to kill you, right? Because they came into his cave. Um, it says the dog, they, they both, they is the dogs, whizzed, right? Meaning they, they, they flew really quickly, right? It's a speed thing off their rock, like rockets. There's another simile. So they're going really fast. And uh, they went down the wind. Down the wind means to be, um, I think it's, it's in the direction of the wind. So they're going with the wind, right? At a pace, which means speed, that Mew himself would have been proud of because Mew is the seagull that flew very fast, right? So they're, they're flying really fast to get away from this giant dragon. The dragon came after them, flapping like a flap dragon and snapping like a snapdragon, knocking the tops of mountains off and setting all the sheep bells ringing like a town on fire. Now you see why they all had bells. Very luckily, down the wind was the right direction. Also, a most stupendous rocket went up from the tower as soon as the bells got frantic. So, um, so the dragon's coming after them, right? And uh, you can imagine that they're being chased and he's flapping like a flap dragon is just describing it um knocking the tops off of mountains so he's like this dragon is so huge he's like just flying through the mountains and setting the sheep bells ringing so why are the sheep bells ringing well the sheep have the bells around their necks so when they're running away the bells go glung, 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 right and then they say now you know why the sheep have bells so then the owner of the sheep can hear the bells ringing like crazy and then and then they can go and help the sheep right um so, so, so you can see there, uh, the bells ringing like a town on fire. That's another simile there. Okay. Um, now, why is that? So bells ringing like a town on fire. Because long ago, when there was a fire in a town, they would ring the bells in the church tower so that everybody would know to come out of their house and help um, to do that. Right. Kind of like a like a siren we have nowadays. Um, down the wind was the right direction. So down the wind means that they're going in the same direction as the wind. So what's happening is, is the wind is helping them go faster, but also the wind is carrying their smell across the moon. So the, the, the wizard, the man in the moon knows that they're coming. Okay. And of course, right direction as in they're going towards the tower, uh, the wizard's tower where they would be safe. Okay. Um, then a uh, stupendous, stupendous means like amazing, big, incredible, um, rocket went up. And then it says, uh, as soon as the bells got frantic, frantic means crazy and fast. And, um, so of course, why did the rocket go up? Because the wizard heard the bells going of the sheep. So he's sending up this rocket to help them get back to the tower. It could be seen all over the moon, like a golden umbrella bursting into a thousand silver tassels, and it caused an unpredicted fall of shooting stars on the world not long after. If it was a guide to the poor dogs, it also meant as a, it was also meant as a warning to the dragon, but he had got far too much steam up to take any notice, so the chase went fiercely on. If you have ever seen a bird chasing a butterfly, and if you can imagine a more than gigantic bird chasing two perfectly insignificant butterflies among the White Mountains, then you can just begin to imagine the twistings, dodgings, hairbreadth escapes, and the wild zigzag rush of that flight home. Uh, so here, the chase is being described, right? It could be seen that's the rocket that the man in the moon sends up like a golden umbrella so you have to imagine this firework goes up and then like shoots out to the sides and kind of looks like this fire umbrella and um, then it says uh silver tassels uh tassels are kind of like if you've ever seen a cloth with these little ropey things hanging from it those are kind of like the tassels um and it caused an unpredicted meaning people didn't know it was going to happen uh fall of shooting stars and uh, then they're describing everything here. So, so the dogs are following this rocket, but it's also meant as a warning for the dragon. I'm like, oh, you shouldn't come here, dragon. But the dragon had got up far too much steam, which means that 
the dragon was already too angry. He was not going to stop, right? Even though he's afraid of the man in the moon, he was like, ah, I'm going so fast and I'm going to catch these dogs. Um, so this chase is going on and he describes it kind of as a bird chasing some butterflies, like a big bird. Um, and he says insignificant, meaning tiny, right? Uh, among the white mountains. So they're going through these mountains. So they're not just going straight. They're turning. They're curving. They're going up and down. They're zigzagging. Um, they say hair breadth escapes. Hair breadth is the, the width of a hair. So if you can imagine something escaping with the width of a hair, that means it was very, very close. You can see this dragon is really close to them. And every now and then he almost gets them. And then they just turn away. Right. So there's lots of things happening in this chase. It's very like exciting and and uh, dangerous for the two dogs more than once before they got even halfway rover random's tail was singed by the dragon's breath what was the man in the moon doing well he let off a truly magnificent rocket and after that he said drat that creature and also drat those puppies they will bring on an eclipse before it is due and then he went down into the cellars and uncorked a dark black spell that looked like jellified tar and honey and smelled like the 5th of November and cabbage boiling over. Right. So, um, so again, the, the chase is really close. So singed means to be like a little bit burned, right? You're, you're, you're not in the fire. You're close to the fire. So the, the dragon is so close that he's, he's almost burning the dogs, right? He's, you can almost see a man like a, tiny bit of fire on, on Roverin's tail. Um, so this is the man in the moon sets up the rocket, right? And then he gets annoyed. He says, drat, he gets annoyed at the dragon. He's annoyed at the puppies for waking up the dragon. And then he says, they will bring on, and bring on means to start an eclipse before it's due. Um, and then he went down into the cellars. So an eclipse, of course, is when the moon goes uh, in front of the, in front of the sun and, um, and you can you the the sun is blocked out by it um before it's due is before it's supposed to happen um because there's a certain date that an eclipse happens okay and this black smell spell looked like jellified tar okay so tar is what you know roads are made of um but it's jellified so this black jelly thing but it looks like it's mixed with honey so it's also kind of clear and so it looks kind of gross this black liquid jelly thing uh, but it's a spell uh, it's not made of tar or honey it looks like that right and then it says it smelled like the 5th of november so you have to understand here that um this book was written by J.R.R. tolkien who is british and in britain there's a holiday called guy fox and on on guy fox day they set off fireworks everywhere so what he means that it smelled like the 5th of november means it smelled like fireworks right it smelled like smoke like fire so this is that's what the spell smells like and that should give you an idea of what the smell spell is going to do right it's going to burn it's going to do those kind of things and of course it smells like cabbage boiling over which doesn't so, so it smells bad it smells like smoke and vegetables right it's not a very pleasant smell at that very moment, the dragon swooped up right above the tower and lifted a huge claw to bat Rover Random, bat him right off into the blank nowhere. But he never did. The man in the moon shot the spell up out of a lower window and hit the dragon splosh in the stomach, where all the dragons are peculiarly tender, and knocked him crank sideways. He lost all his wits and flew bang into a mountain before he could get his steering right. And it was difficult to say which was most damaged, his nose or the mountain. Both were out of shape. Right, so a lot happens here. Um, so first of all, the dragon goes upwards. So, the, so the, the two dogs are almost at the tower. And then he says he tries to bat Rover and bat as in hit, as in, as in whack, as in take his arm and whack him. And it says, bat him right off into the blank nowhere, which means like, so you've got to imagine they're flying up high. Right. And he's going to whack him literally into space off of the moon. Uh, but he never did. The man in the moon shot up his phone. So blank nowhere there means like into space. Um, so the man in the moon shoots up his spell. This is the black jelly one and it splashes. So, so the spell is kind of liquid. This isn't like your Harry Potter kind of spell. Um, so splash is kind of the sound. You can imagine this kind of liquid thing going splosh like onto his stomach and then it says where all dragons are peculiar means strangely like it's 
it's kind of mysterious, like we don't know why. Um, tender. So tender means soft and, and and sensitive and delicate, right? So, so the the so the the wizard is smart the man in the moon he shoots him where the dragon is soft now here is technically a little bit of a connection to another story because as i've said before uh this book is written by jrr tolkien who also wrote the lord of the rings and the hobbit so if you've ever seen the movies of the hobbit or read the hobbit you will know that there's a famous dragon in the hobbit called smaug and smaug has armor all over his body right he's got he's got jewels and metal and things this dragon is almost impenetrable but then on his stomach there's a small little bit that is not covered and that is soft and um uh, spoiler alert that is uh eventually how the dragon smog is killed so basically the writer is making fun of himself here <laughs> for always making dragons that have a soft spot on their stomach where they can be hurt okay um so he shoots the white dragon with this and then it knocks him crank sideways so crank means like twisted like turned so you have to imagine that the dragon's being hit by the spell and then like twists and turns like flips over almost to the side um he loses his wits meaning like he kind of gets dizzy he's almost knocked out and he flies bang into a mountain right um and then it says so <laughs> so he flies into a mountain so you have to imagine like he's hit by the spell he kind of can't see his dizzy is not and he wham he flies into the mountain and it says it doesn't know what's most damaged his nose or the mountain so both are damaged and it says both were out of shape right so you can imagine the out of shape meaning as in broken twisted bent right um so that, that's what happened to the dragon so the two dogs fell in through the top window and never got back their breath for a week and the dragon slowly made his lopsided way home where he rubbed his nose for months the next eclipse was a failure for the dragon was too busy licking his tummy to attend to it and he never got the black splotches off where the spell hit him i'm afraid they will last forever they call him the mottled monster now all right so the dogs are saved they fall in through them, but of course they're out of breath right now what do they mean by they didn't get their breath back for a week which means like they were tired they were exhausted for a whole week doesn't mean they couldn't breathe because then they'd be dead and the story would be over um when they say the dragon's lopsided so you have to imagine the dragon's hurt so like one side is like falling down like you know one wing is lower than the other he's lopsided right um and he rubs his nose for months then it says the eclipse was a failure so in the story the dragon causes the eclipse by flying around the mountain i mean the moon um but he didn't because he was hurt so then the eclipse didn't happen um and the he was he was licking his tummy uh the, for the dragon was too busy licking his tummy to attend to attend to it which means to to do it so he what is it it is the eclipse so the, the dragon couldn't make the eclipse happen basically and he never got the black splotches off um so you have to imagine this this white dragon with black splotches right and um so that's why they call him the mottled mottled means like not one color like kind of like many colors right kind of like a cow with like black spots on the white cow right um so that's why they call him the mottled monster